Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the December 2019 commencement exercises of Hofstra University. We begin our program with the invocation delivered by Rabbi Dave Siegel, followed by the national anthem and our alma mater performed by Matthew Cirillo, class of 2020. He will be accompanied by the Hofstra University Symphony Orchestra. The words to the alma mater on the inside front cover of your program, will everyone please stand in body or in spirit? Almighty God, as we gather here today with our Hofstra family to acknowledge and celebrate the accomplishments of our graduating students, we express our great thanks for allowing us to reach this special occasion. Grant your blessings to the parents, friends, faculty, and administrators that have supported and guided these students each day. Please give our amazing graduates the opportunity to make their dreams come true the strength and knowledge to help make this world a better place, and the resources to accomplish what we know they are capable of. May these students always be a blessing to everyone whose life they touch, and may it be your will, merciful God, that these students and all of us always bask in your blessings of health, happiness, and peace. And finally, please make sure they always remember that they have a home at Hofstra University. And let us say, Amen. Grateful, and thus we thank thee for 
inspiring us and guiding us through all the great unknown. Oh, hail the blue and gold, unrivaled motivation in valuable and true. Selfless with thy knowledge and vision to pursue. Thou shalt remain our home. Dear Hofstra, we are grateful, and thus we thank thee for. Inspiring us and guiding us through all the graves unknown. seated. I now have the pleasure of making some very special introductions, beginning with the chairperson of the Hofstra University Board of Trustees, Donald M. Schaefer. I'm also pleased to introduce our deans, Warren Frazina, Hofstra University Honors College, Kathleen Gallo, Gallo the Hofstra Northwell School of Graduate Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Janet Lenahan, the Frank G. Zarb School of Business. Mark Lukashevitz, the Lawrence Herbert School of Communication. Gail Prudenti, the Maurice A. Dean School of Law. Sina Rabani, the Fred DeMattis School of Engineering and Applied Science. Benjamin Rifkin, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, which includes the School of Education, the Calico School of Government, Public Policy and International Affairs, the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, and the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, and Holly J. Sarup, the School of Health Professions and Human Services, representing our faculty leadership, the speaker of our faculty, George Giuliani, the chair of the Senate Executive Committee, William Caniano, and the chair of the University Senate Planning and Budget Committee, Craig Burnett. And of course, the person who leads our university and has led our university with distinction for 20 years, the person who needs no introduction, President Stuart Rabinowitz. Thank you. Um, you know, we just picked tonight's singer at random. Uh, almost any Hofstra student sings like that, don't you think? We could? No, that was a fabulous, just a fabulous uh, rendition. And uh, I always like to start off my speeches with uh, applause, so I just want to let you know, maybe the members of the audience did not know, that the Hofstra men's basketball team defeated UCLA this year at UCLA. Okay, now we'll get back to graduation. Members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, administration, guests, but most importantly, members of the class of 2019 and their proud family and friends, welcome to our mid-year commencement. Now, contrary to the expectations of some of you, I will not use this occasion to try to give you useful advice on how each of you can attain success and happiness. I would do that if I could, but I can't. And that's not because I'm unhappy. On the contrary, I am incredibly fortunate that I managed to attain the only four jobs I ever dreamed about. First, as an attorney, then as a law professor, then as a law school dean, and soon to begin my 20th year as president of this great university. One which, in my view, has the best college students in America. It does, that's you. Now, how did I do that? Well, all I could say is I worked hard 
and I'm, I am ambitious. But most importantly, the key to my success has been that I have been incredibly lucky. Now, if I advise you to go through life being incredibly lucky, that is not a useful strategic game plan for you. But if somehow you can do it, do it. Um, I will, however, offer you some modest advice on what you might think about doing tonight. And my first suggestion is that you should hug and thank your parents, your spouses, your relatives, and your friends, and anyone else who helped you to reach this monumental day in your lives. And please do that in person, and not on Snapbook or Facegram or Insta something. In person, in person. Second, I ask that you express your appreciation to the Hostra faculty members, or hopefully members, who inspired you while you were here, and the administrators and staff who made your journey here a little bit easier. Our faculty and our administration and our staff have made the education of young people their calling. For us, an expression of appreciation from one of our graduates is inspiring and validating. And finally, before you begin the next phase of your journey through life, you can take a little time to celebrate and to party tonight. Responsibly, of course. And that means avoiding any discussion involving politics. Don't do it, I'm telling you. Indeed, this whole ceremony, despite all the pomp and circumstance surrounding it, is at core simply a celebration. We are here to celebrate the accomplishments and the hard work of the graduates and the sacrifices that we know have been made on their behalf by their family and by their friends. And we also celebrate the many exciting future options and opportunities all that work and all those sacrifices have afforded to the graduates who today will acquire one of the very rarest assets in life, one which will never ever depreciate in value. Even Lamborghinis depreciate in value, but not your degree. Indeed, we are confident that these degrees will increase in value throughout your careers, and at the very least, we now promise you that we will do, continue to do everything in our power to enhance the stature and reputation of this university and thus the value of your degree. And so, by far, my most important message to our graduates is so simple, and that is you have earned our congratulations and our admiration. You have worked hard, you have learned well, and you are ready to make your mark on the world. And in order to do so, I urge you to be, or continue to be, informed and active participants in the democratic process so that you could help your generation in solving the daunting challenges which our country faces and the world faces in the 21st century. Indeed, my opinion is the world is desperate for your generation. We need you to help overcome challenges which my generation and others have not met, including, and not the least of which, is how to save our air and our oceans, and indeed our planet, for your children and your grandchildren, for my three-year-old grandson, Jack, who's the handsomest child that ever was, and his children, and his grandchildren so they could enjoy an earth the way we have. So I close my brief remarks today as I have for all of my years as president, and that is simply by wishing every one of our graduates well. I wish each of you all the success you think you need and all that work and ability earned for you. I wish you the perspective to forgive yourself and learn from the mistakes because they are inevitable. I wish you the tenacity, the courage, once again, the good luck to someday find a life's work about which you feel passionate, 
rather than settling one for not, with, settling one which neither challenges nor fulfills you. I hope you experience the very special sense of satisfaction and self-worth that comes only from using at least some of your talent and some of your energy to help those who are in need. I wish you the wisdom not to forego the love of family and friends in a relentless pursuit of material success. And finally, I wish that you become not, not that you not become so preoccupied with achieving some cherished goal on some finite faraway day that you somehow fail to appreciate each and every day of your life. The class of 2019 leaves here with our admiration and our affection. We enjoy teaching you, and indeed we enjoy learning from you. We hope that you will maintain your ties to your classmates and to your alma mater. From this day forward, your accomplishments will always be the most important driver of the reputation of the value of a Hofstra education. You will always be an important member of the university community, and Hofstra will always welcome you back home. On behalf of the faculty, administration, and staff, I extend to each of you our heartiest congratulations and warmest wishes for your success and happiness. Thank you. It's now my pleasure to ask the chairperson of our Board of Trustees, Donald Schaefer, to come forward to introduce his candidate for an honorary degree, Marcus Brackley. Thank you, President Rabinowitz. Good evening. I would like to take a moment on behalf of the Board of Trustees to congratulate the class of 2019 on your graduation and to welcome you, your families, and friends to this celebration of your academic achievement. We are proud of you and acknowledge the hard work and dedication that you have displayed in reaching this wonderful day. We hope that you will follow your passions and are confident that your future will be exemplary. Please know that Hofstra will always be here for you as you go forward. You are an important part of the enduring bond of the Hofstra family, and we look forward to your leadership role in providing guidance and support to the Hofstra students who will be following in your footsteps. It is my privilege to welcome Marcus W. Brockley, whose remarkable career in the fields of media, technology, and finance has been exceptional. Mr. Brockley is co-founder and managing partner of North Base Media, a partnership investing in innovative media and technology companies in key growth markets around the world. He is an advisor and director of several of these companies, including leading media in Poland, Mexico, and Taiwan. Before becoming an entrepreneur and investor, Mr. Brapley enjoyed a long and distinguished career in journalism. He served as executive editor of the Washington Post, overseeing its news content operations. Under his leadership, the Post extended its record of journalistic excellence with seven Pulitzer Prizes and added to its investigative, politics, and economics teams. It also became a digitally and mobile-focused newsroom. Prior to his tenure at the Post, Mr. Brackley spent more than 24 years at the Wall Street Journal, ultimately serving as its top editor. In addition to the US paper, he oversaw the journal's European and Asian editions, its digital properties, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the stock market index that, uh, that was then operated by the journal. He also oversaw the development and launch of the luxury lifestyle magazine, W 
SJ. During the period of time preceding his appointment to managing editor, Mr. Brackley spent 15 years as a journal correspondent and bureau chief, living in Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo, and Stockholm. He was a journal's national editor on September 11, 2001, and helped to guide the paper's Pulitzer Prize winning coverage that day. Mr. Brackley is a graduate of Columbia University and was a Neiman Fellow in journalism at Harvard University. Over the course of his outstanding career, he has served on many professional boards and organizations, including the Overseas Press Club, the Foreign Correspondence Club of Hong Kong, the prestigious Knight Baget Fellowship Program at Columbia University, and the International Center for Journalists. He is chair of the Arthur F. Burns Fellowship, an exchange program for American, German, and Canadian journalists. Mr. Brackley is a trustee of the Smithsonian's Hirshhorn Museum and Sculpture Garden in Washington, D.C., and is on the advisory board of the Prix Pictet, the world's leading global award for photography and sustainability. He also is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations and the Economic Club of Washington, D.C. I now ask Mr. Brockley to step forward, along with President Rabinowitz and Provost Berliner, to confer the decree. Ah. Sorry. I should have known that. Mr. President, for Marcus Brockley's distinguished career in the worlds of media, technology, and finance, it is my honor to present him to you as a candidate for the Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. This honorary degree, Doctor of Humane Letters, is awarded by the university to honor exceptional individuals for outstanding career achievements. And Marcus Brockley, you certainly meet that standard. This is in recognition of your astounding professional success and your long record of public service. And it is our honor and privilege to bestow upon you the degree Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Um, President Rabinowitz, Provost Berliner, Chairman Schaefer, trustees, members of the faculty, friends, proud families, and above all, graduates, good evening and congratulations to the class of 2019. I'm delighted and honored to be here tonight. Hofstra is such a shining example of openness and opportunity. To see the incredible diversity here is a reminder of what has made this nation great and adds to my pride at being invited to join this community and participate in this important moment in your lives. That said, it also deepens my suspicion that I may be the least worthy degree recipient in this hall tonight. Nor is this the first time that I felt like an imposter at one of these ceremonies. In 1983, the last time I attended a graduation that involved me in any way other than paying tuition, my parents were so skeptical I'd finish that they didn't show up. They did, however, show up tonight, which is odd. I had, I had so few credits, I completed my degree requirements only in August instead of May. When people ask now what I majored in, I say graduation. From that, you can guess one subversive reason why I am so happy being here with you tonight. I identify with you not just as graduates, but as brave souls who dispense with tradition, a room full of Jon Snows, if I may invoke Game of Thrones, launching fearlessly into the coming winter. And you should be proud, because as every graduation speaker in the history of university commencements has observed, the world values people who aren't conventional, people who follow their dreams, and people who don't wait for spring. I know that you will look back on this night and your time here with fondness, perhaps with relief, possibly through the haze of a hangover tomorrow morning. But tonight, as you stand on the threshold of the rest of your lives, this is a time to pause and be proud of your accomplishments. 
A university degree gives you a foundation on which you can build whatever elaborate edifice you choose. There are people in this room who will go on to life-saving careers in medicine and research, others who will prosper in business and technology, or maybe lead us in politics, I hope. Some of you will apply, enforce, or even write our laws. Others will probably try all of these careers, serial adventurers in an age ever more forgiving of experimentation. That's good because the path to success is long and constantly forks in new directions. I've always followed the Yogi Berra line. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. That's how six years ago, as Chairman Schaefer just told you, I set out on a new career path with all the humiliations and challenges of learning something new, in case any of you think learning ever gets easier. This willingness to do something new has been liberating, if occasionally nerve-wracking, as you will discover when you walk out of this hall and into the rest of your lives. But trying something new certainly wasn't how my career started. I was one of those people who always knew exactly what they wanted to do, and for me, that was news. And that was as geeky then as it sounds now. I thought about why I was drawn to news. I don't have a full answer. I started reading newspapers for the comics, a known gateway drug for news junkies. <laughs> then there was the magical appeal of television, still in its early days. The only television programming that my parents allowed us to stay up late for was the news. When Neil Armstrong first set foot on the moon, an event broadcast live to the world in flickering black and white, it was evening in my hometown of Boulder, Colorado. I wasn't in bed that giddy night until nearly midnight, one giant leap for the early to bed crowd. Or maybe what drew me to the news was the sense that even far off events could change our lives. I never will forget how news reports of the war in distant Vietnam brought University of Colorado students into the streets near my primary school. The protesting students attracted the police. The police brought tear gas. And that, for me, was it. There was a straight line from the news of a war in a far-off land to the most exciting thing happening in our town, and the thrill of something dangerous literally in the air. A couple of years later, when the Watergate scandal jolted the nation in 1973, I'd go to a friend's house and watch the Senate hearings. By the way, I'd like to thank Congress and, and the networks for airing that 70s show these last few weeks. Um, I, can't, I can tell you where I was when Nixon resigned, just as I can tell you what I was doing when Reagan was elected, when the Berlin Wall fell, when Deng Xiaoping died, and for that matter, when the Big Lebowski came out. These aren't just chapters in a history book, though. These are milestones of, a late, li of late boomer life, but they aren't the measure of it. The measure of a life, as I'm sure you know, is what we contribute, what we give to others. And I think that's the aspect of journalism that drew me in. The opportunity to describe and interpret the world, to inform and enlighten, to shape our collective understanding, to provide the factual raw materials from which the tapestry of democracy must be woven. It's not a completely selfless ambition, I admit. I mean, there is something exhilarating about being the one in the know, driving the conversation among your friends, knowing that people are buzzing about what you're posting on Instagram. And I'm sure that everyone in the, every one of the students in this room has used Instagram or Snapchat, because, and even because sometimes I know you want to reach your parents, probably Facebook. When I was at the Wall Street Journal, my colleagues and I swaggered with the knowledge we were the largest circulation newspaper in the United States. Our print readership then topped two million every day. That's a lot, but that's less than one one thousandth of the global audience Facebook now reaches. And Facebook also owns and operates Instagram and WhatsApp. Combined, products controlled by 35-year-old Mark Zuckerberg reach more people than lived on Earth the day he was born. This truly is, as the cliche would have it, the information age. Digital and social media platforms have revolutionized how we and how you interact. Some of that is good. Some of it most definitely is not. Our public dialogue has become coarser. People share cute kid pictures on Facebook, but they also trade in contempt. People emote on Twitter, but they also lure followers into dark cul-de-sacs of lies. YouTube is an entertainment kaleidoscope, algorithmic, algorithmically designed to reinforce prejudices and preconceptions. Thank God, then, that China has given us a safe space in TikTok. <laughs> the unhappy truth of this new information era is that we have allowed a variety of malevolent actors, even foreign governments, to drive insidious wedges of doubt and distrust into our society. We live in a world where what is right and what is good are seldom obvious and often are intentionally blurred. Fake news travels faster than real news and gets shared more widely. 
Data is used to target vulnerable people or monitor or regu and regulate people without their consent. New technologies have put immense power into the hands of every one of us. The phone in your pocket has more processing capacity than all the computers that powered Apollo 11 to the moon on that warm July night in 1969. Yet the evidence is overwhelming that we haven't always used this newfound power well. Tonight, as you reflect on the future that beckons you beyond this evening, I want to make a plea to all of you. Bring the values, tolerance, and wisdom imparted to you at this great, diverse, and open-minded university to that primordial digital world into which you are graduating. This may seem like narrow advice for a hall full of graduates in business and science, literature and the humanities, and all the professional schools whose gonfalons are arranged here. By the way, I learned that word in the program. <laughs> but it's going to be critically important to all of your professions and to the world you live in. More than any generation before, each of you will create content, produce narratives, and publish or share information across the vast, flat, digital plane that is our world today. So in the spirit of a man with a hammer to whom every problem looks like a nail, allow me as a longtime journalist to offer a few of the lessons I impart to people like you who make information and make information for their society. First of all, read and, read and observe constantly and widely. The greatest gift of an education is the habit of learning and absorbing information. Knowledge is a competitive advantage. History does have a way of repeating itself, or as some would have it, rhyming. That's evident to anyone following recent events out of Washington, which are, dressed, which are drenched in precedent. It may not be great for the nation, but it's not bad for me that I can draw on what I learned watching Watergate on TV as a kid to understand what is happening today. Second, remember that the truth is a mosaic made up of information from many sources. Nobody has a monopoly on it. When I was the Washington Post's editor, I once got a furious phone call from a top White House official because we'd published a report from the insurance industry that was critical of President Obama's signature health care proposal. It wasn't fair, the official said, because the industry was a special interest. So are you, I replied. I then got hung up on by one of the most powerful people in the world. But I think my point was valid. You won't learn everything from one source because everyone has a different point of view or agenda. You have to see with both eyes to have perspective. Always know what motivates someone to tell you something or to publish a piece of information, whether it's a story, a video, or a tweet. Understand what, what they're thinking and take account of that as you understand what they're telling you and what you're learning. There's an old saying in journalism, if your mother says she loves you, check it out. What that means is just because someone says something doesn't mean it's true. I spent half of yesterday listening to members of Congress who might benefit from this rule. Closely related to that, don't make assumptions. We all have a tendency to think we know something because we've heard it before, because it fits with a stereotype in our heads. As you go through life, always consider that there's an alternative point of view or understanding that may be just as valid as your own. I used to tell foreign correspondents there was no story too distant for an American audience, as long as it was told with humanity. Once, as a young reporter, I stumbled into a massive street protest in Seoul, South Korea. The riot police were wielding batons and deploying tear gas. As it entered my nostrils, I had probably the strangest reaction of anyone there. My eyes were filled with tears, but my heart was filled with nostalgia for my childhood in Boulder, Colorado, in the anti-Vietnam protests. The world is a big, random place, but somehow it ties together. We have the same issues and challenges, the same love for our families, wherever we live, however rich or poor. We all face the same existential issues, so always be empathetic. Finally, seek the truth. It won't always please you. It may anger or frustrate you. But you owe it to yourself and to your society to know what is true and equally important to admit when you're wrong about something. The truth and facts matter enormously, especially in the furnaces of public debate where history is being forged. The pillars of our representative democracy, the foundations of our republic, depend on factual information, common purpose, and the compassion for others that inspired this country's founders when they conceived of this country. We must trust each other to do right with the facts. Why am I putting this burden on you? It's your last assignment from Hofstra. It's because you're ready. When the Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776, setting this whole American enterprise in motion, Alexander Hamilton was 21, James Madison was 25, 
Thomas Jefferson was 33. Youth is not an impediment to action, it's a call to action. You are at an age when you should be thinking ambitiously about how you want to shape or even change the world you're inheriting. Those of us on this stage, like every generation of graying elders, would like to think that you should defer to our experience. And I mean sometimes, to be honest, you should, and that's why I'm addressing you now and why you're listening to me. But in the end, my advice to you here tonight is to recognize that the world is now yours to shape and define. A few years ago, I was checking into a hotel in Brazil and handed my passport to a young woman at the front desk. As she flipped it open, I made a joke about being older than I looked. Without glancing up, she said, you'll never be younger than you are right now which wasn't reassuring to me, I have to say, but it was a reminder that every day matters. You will never be able to make a greater difference in the world than by embracing it immediately as yours. With the tools of technology and the ability each of you has to create narratives and tell stories, to share ideas and thoughts, to organize and lead others, the responsibility is yours to make this world a safer, better, and more welcoming place for all. Thank you very much for having me tonight. Congratulations, class of 2019. All right, wait for it. It's coming. Will the candidates for the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Engineering, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, and Bachelor of Science in Education degrees please stand in body or spirit? Mr. President, please stand. Thanks. Mr. President, Mr. President, I have the honor to present those candidates from the Zarb School of Business, the Herbert School of Communication, the School of Education, the Dematis School of Engineering and Applied Science, the Calico School of Government, Public Policy and International Affairs, the School of Health Professions and Human Services, the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and the School of Natural Sciences and Mathematics, who have successfully completed all the requirements for the bachelor's degree, I join with the faculty and deans from each of the schools and colleges in recommending that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of your deans and faculties and our provost, I am delighted to confer upon you one of the following degrees as appropriate. Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Engineering, Bachelor of Fine Arts, Bachelor of Science, or Bachelor of Science in Education. Congratulations. Will the graduates please come forward to be recognized your names will be read by Zarb School of Business Senior Associate Dean Joya Bales, Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Associate Dean Jean Giebel, Herbert School of Communication Assistant Dean Michelle Roberts, and the Mattis School of Engineering and Applied Science Associate Dean uh, David Rooney. You will be congratulated by President Rabinowitz. You'll be congratulated by Chairperson Schaefer and by the appropriate dean. Graduate of Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Tyler Taylor. Sashin Kumar. 
Kaylin Savavia. Caitlin Cuff. Chase Laxdahl. Brian Taranto. Nicholas Ferrer. Lauren Jenkins. Joseph Syriac. Tyler Greenidge. Daniel Kofo Abayami. Stephen Carson. Harminder Pathiati. Anand Vargas. Justine Ecker. Nicholas Lee. Julia Finneran. Olivia King. Yaxio Wang. Madison Yinger. Cassandra Edwards. Ryan Gary. Jacqueline Dyluski. Bianca Gordon. Justin Kumamato. Christina Restifo. Alex Allen Miller. Alexandra Radeva. Joseph Almeida. Ashley Jacob. Rishab Batnayar. Eileen Dennis. Danielle Johnson. Nathan Silverberg. <laughs> Tyrone Harmon. Ming Jing Lee. Yao Pan. Asasante Koch. Nia Arrington Seward. Debbie Gomez. Kujal Kutaria. Leonardo Malandato. Andrew Alter. Munmi Kornager. Mally Barclay. Megan Maludley. Caroline Piers. Jaskaran Singh. Akash Mishra. Samantha Wogan. Kwab Abid. Benjamin Strauss. Shiban Tobra. Michael Ringel. Nicholas Garden. Anthony Avgi. Genesis Robles. Michael Checo. Crystal Rivera. Shana Bakshi. Tyler Babu Lal. Carrie Wetter. Jason James. Brittany Dorch. Jillian Thomas. Michael Grasso. Adam Hockenberry. Zachary McDonald. Jesse Delman. Ethan Borst. Heather Grant. Tiana Watkins. Jessica Kurtz. James Factora. Emily Hart. 
James Frankie. Marley Delaney. Owen Andruchow. Hofstra School of Education. Samantha Hoffman. Samantha Lesser. Alina George. Sarah Martinez. Shannon Scarano. Frank G. Zarb, School of Business. Pat Montagnan Mantagano. Henry Mimo. Ariana DeBella. Matthew Barwell. Marin Mays. Julio Lopez Salmananca. Mireya Calderon. Yash Tilva. Christopher Cerro. David Maurer. Christopher Whitaker. Anthony Ruggiero. Rebecca White. Elizabeth Donovan. Vadraj Galapad. Mason Roth. Brandon Hollander. Anand Kata. Thomas Makura. Eric Packer. Joseph Tunstall. Chelsea Tommaso. Thalassi Pias. Noah Woods. Darian Jackson. Sammy De La Cruz. Christopher Ginali. Louis Rafter. Michael Pais. Tyler Treasure. David Shirley. Mason Flegel. Marshall Lias. Ruth Jeanette Darby. Amoy Brown Bard. Nicholas Bassett. Joyce Hildago. Katherine Anderson. Kevin Garcia. Christopher Burke. Nicholas McGann. Samantha Fassman. Francesca Miller. Joseph Miller. Damandeep Carr. Gurneek Singh. Mayank Dehia. Raina Singh. Tiffany Wang. Erica Canali. Tanisha Ramsony. Tate Simmons. Eva Wayne. Jessica Kang. Anthony Rizzo. Michael Conti. Mallory Gershowitz. Sean Nealis. Justin Kappel. Michelle Romeo. Priyanka Siani. Jessica Tangiari. Rumsha Sialan. 
Ruyu Zhang. Haijan Wu. Honglin He. Junzi Zhang. Zeyu Peng. Lara O'Rourke. Jillian O'Connell. Jonathan Warg. Monique Yanella. The Herbert School of Communication. Anna Kanahau Torres. Eloise Santos. Daniela Coletti. Jamie Salkind. Martha Morton. Catherine Moriale. Mia Thompson. Celia Earl. Leanne Souza, Christopher Detweiler, Julia Esposito, Andrea Bilton, Jessica Vespa, William Guartin, Berkeley Stevens, Giovanna Timms, Ashley Mantrana, Nathan Lockman, Chandler Harmison, Hannah Tuison, James Yeary, Jason Carolla, Aoife Mar Ryan, Sarah Bornstein, Justin Chupunko, Alyssa Burke, Shayla Sales, Alyssa Scott, Evan Schneider, Lauren Lauder, Caitlin Cusimano, Nicole Zbikowski, Amanda Romeo, Tamata School of Engineering and Applied Science. Tamanur Rahman. Gabriel Guzman. Thomas Biskoff. Alan Horine. Tommy High. Alexander Bihari. Yuleng Zhu. Brandon Maldonado. Salvatore Pica. Michael Joseph Cariasso, Ariana Gaspar Martins, Brian Tavella, Ricky Rooklyn, Matthew Higgins, Jenna Noble, Maria Lombardo, Jacob Bernstein, Maria Lopez, Matthew Michelle. Frank Tricouros, Eric Correa, David Gliathli, Miguel Mariscal, Lucas Francho Cochenza, Jack Zapernik, David Aduaca, Anthony Salvucci. Shaijin Abraham. Joseph Grice, Darren Schwartz, James Swan, Matthew Weinert, Sari Altawabini, Um Dadim Alakor, Joseph Samaru. William Ernest Santos, Hugo Renzo Alcis, 
James Cavanaugh, Anayara Doshi, Kubra Bayram, Gulshan Mangra, Yosef Ofridi, Tala Alquatani, Yons Alwaji, Oriana Marone, graduates of the School of Health Professions and Human Services, Julian Fashabeni, Sabrina Caridi, Angelica Mataromutu, Yamel Guzman, Shannon Tone, Tanisha Clark, Anthony Pinzone, Maria Kirkurajai, <laughs> Brittany Conkling, Emily Basile, Rebecca Schwartz. Taylor Wallach, Deanne Marziano, Rhea Sergipal, Esha Patel, Alexis Lott, Linda Serrano, <laughs> Ashley King, Sasha Hicks. Allison Lawkins, Andrew Adrian, Michelle Pierre, Char Gilles Khan, Christopher John Myro, Eric Marino, Nirvana Narayan, Shinudu Mabal Alu. Congratulations to all the graduates. Will the candidates for the Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master of Public Health, Master of Science, Master of Science and Education, and Advanced Certificates, please stand. <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President, I have the honor to present these candidates from the Zarb School of Business the Herbert School of Communication, the School of Education, the Dematis School of Engineering and Applied Science, the School of Health Professions, Professions and Human Services, the School of Humanities, Fine and Performing Arts, the School of Natural Science and Mathematics, and the Hofstra and Northwell School of Graduate Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, who have successfully completed all the requirements for the master's degree or advanced certificate. I join with the faculty and the deans from each of the schools and colleges in recommending that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of the provost, your deans, and your faculty, I am delighted to confer upon you one of the following degrees as appropriate. Master of Arts, Master of Business Administration, Master of Fine Arts, Master of Health Administration, Master, <laughs> Master of Public Health, Master of Science, Master of Science and Education, or Advanced Certificate. Congratulations. Will the graduates please come forward to be recognized? Your names will be read by Zarb School of Business Associate Dean Brian Caligiuri, School of Health Professions and Human Services Associate Dean Jacqueline Kuhn, Hofstra Northwell School of Graduate Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies, PA Program Director and Chairperson 
Karina Lascalzo, and Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Assistant Dean for the School of Education, Ariana Murphy. Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Ji Wan Zhu. Ji Chen. School of Education. Kimberly Siano. Cora Franzis. Candice Zuko. Ting Ting Chen. Romina Groisman. Ryan Brenner. Eric Strickland. Paul Seglio. Catherine Natter. Danielle Donnelly. Sophia Blianska. Victoria Liang. Sabrina Sung. Ashrina Ali. Sierra Cravens, Megan McCauley, Michaela Ricciardi, Sarah Bernstein, Ashley Pagnazzi, Rachel Talon, Odette Williams, Peter Hines, Stephanie Malatestinic, Victoria Dempsey, Amanda Barbudo, Lauren Fay, Julianne Warren, Maria Fastrio. Kelly Salvati, Casey Signorelli, Jessica Tenzer, Christina Camel, Jenna Petrogano, Eric Peluso, Crystal Mackey. Victoria Ayanu. Julia Hogan. Luli Contreras. Tiffany Burks. Nicole McNair. Cassia Borges Usabio. Christina Fex. Hannah Poland, Amanda Schneider, Nicole Winters, Kristen Rowe, graduates of the Frank G. Zarb School of Business, Doris Bugoya, Pedro Henrique Mano de Mora, Janet Naranin. David Fashion, Michelle Ferruli, Aditya Basunath, Donna Lee Ray, Lisa Whittingham, Rizwanul Alam, Cloudy Grimadu, Christopher Lee. Carlos Gonzalez, 
and Kala Ramandi. Caroline Murphy. Sam Williams. Camila Elazarov. <laughs> Nika Thomas. Dominic Aquista. Maxine Herschler. Nimi Cherian. Lorraine Tyrell. Lathan Lev. Jonathan Valerio. Shen Yu. Bailey Gorman. Zacharia Benbrahimin. Zawe Chen. Yorgo Hatsipasram. Christopher Chalemi. Jesse Rubin. Robert Tassi. Hasibala Yosara. Michelle Mangini. Christina Bruzo. Megan Stoller. Danielle Bayer. Bear. Amanda McShane. Yao Zhang. Wen Ren. Yanli Zhao. Yuhang Wu. Bonnie Suen. Lexi Lodato. Marlene Portacarico. Kathleen Kelly. Charlie Bradley. Michael Schmidt. Daniel Altman. Armando Gonzalez. Mohammed Badat. Liam McCall, Juan Fuentes, Sarah Colicchio, Yesenia Gonzalez, Jean Marie Starkey, Richard Bordreo, Sean Randazzo, Shaquan Guo, Huanang Wang, Boyang Wang, Kyle Miller, Jake Chang, Chengji Yang, Yu Yang Lu. Soihen Yang, Quan Lu, Ziyang Zhu, Mansi Srivastava, Joanne Hernandez, Xunwang Li. Ting Ting Zhang, Yi Chen Gu, Ying Yu, Xin Yin Hu, Ru Qi Han, Yu Wan, Sheng Yi Yu Chen. Jia Ho Ko, Kin Lam, Lei Li, 
Chuang Zia. Yang Hai Yu. Chong Kong Guan. Xin Yi Liang. Fei Yao Go. Zueting Lu. Sherry Wang. Han Yu Hu. Jin Han Ren. Yang Yang. Wei Wang. Ying Ying Zhu. Nan Lu. Kayla Sangam. Hanzen Tan. Ying Hu. Xin Hu Sun. The Lawrence Herbert School of Communications. Donovan Grun. Sydney Bostic. Taisha Johnson. Chen Quang. Natasha King. Adrian McLaughlin. Charmise Wood Woodside Dree. Desiree. Thank you. Daniel Goldberg. Michael James. Stephen Doom. Sorry. School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. Xin Hu. Wang Kang. Dan M. Menu. Michael Sonic. Congratulations, graduates. Professions and Human Services. Mm -hmm. Ashley Andre. Angelo Adorno. Angel. Angel. Samantha Lavelle Dioshin. Sierra Barnett. Monica Aurora. Lalita Mulcan. Aaron Meany. Michelle Pizarro. Michael Rizart. Burden Yudin. Nikita Ramit. Raven Brewington. Christina Anora. Samir Preet Singh. Herman Javid. Angela Brooks. Michael, Michelle Aris Michaela. Regina Butcher. Sandra Bidinski. Christine Nardelli. Catherine Kazimotri. Nirvani Rudria. Olivia McGregor. Emily Fudin. Kalani Boots. Tamika Merchant. Shandy Stillen. Thomas Lamb. Vasiliki Bacones. Akiva Abramitz. Adam Burke. Alexander Ashton. Valerie Vogels. Melissa Mesteridis. 
Delila Perry. Mark Torres. Griffin Sullivan. Jennifer Babakoff. Haley Mazel. Gabrielle Tassielli. Rebecca Pistushi. Jessica Caulfield. Joanna Chili. Dana Reeves. Lauren Fusco. Shahai Henry. Zari Goye. Akasha Zaid. Deshauna Nichols. Desiree Mangon. Svetlana Kerman. Jarlene Diaz. Magali Pearson. Maureen Glennon Heave. Lubov Nikosa. Michael Marmole. Mohammed Alansari. Aisha Waget. Portia Bertram. Jenny Marak. Makina Hora. Dahlia Schreier. Isabel Schechter. Claudine Fong. Alexa Goebel. Laurel Lee Stanick. Allison Rossi. Paige Brickman. Jessica Ferguson. Joshua Cordova. Jamie Wohin. Maura Collins. Salman Manhanwar. Haley Fister. Anamika Shahi. Devin Oliva. Namisha Singh. So He Jung. Anil Makwan. Graduates of the Hofstra Northwell School of Graduate Nursing and Physician Assistant Studies. Puneet Gill. Haley Du. Jadzia Pineda Medina. Joshua Reyes. Justin Falicaro. Emilio Teda. Brittany Wallacen. Gabriela Orego. Giselle Lorenzo. Congratulations to all the graduates. Will the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, I have the honor to present these candidates who have successfully completed all of the requirements for the degree of Juris Doctor 
from the Maurice A. School, Dean School of Law. I recommend, together with our faculty, that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra and the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of the dean of faculty and the dean and the faculty of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law, it's my privilege to confer upon you the degree Juris Doctor. Congratulations and study for the bar exam. Thank you so much. Will the graduates please step forward to be introduced by our academic dean, Julian Koo, and hooded by our associate professor, Brenner Fischel, and recognized by President Rabinowitz and myself. Whitney Coleman. Clinton Baus. Damian Ramos. Richard Sterlin. Troy Stone. Will the candidates for the degree of Masters of Law and Masters of Arts, if there are any here this evening, please stand. Yes. Wonderful, please. It is absolutely wonderful. Please rise. And Mr. President, I have the absolute honor to present the students of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law who have satisfied all of the requirements for the degrees of Masters of Law and Masters of Arts. And upon the recommendation of the faculty of our law school, I ask that you confer the appropriate degree upon these candidates. My pleasure. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra and the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of the provost and the dean and the faculty of the Maurice A. Dean School of Law, it's my privilege to confer upon you the degree Master of Laws or Master of Arts as appropriate. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And will I ask each of the candidates to please come forward to the stage to be introduced by Dean Julian Koo and recognized by President Rabinowitz and myself.
Uh, uh, London Smith de Richelieu. Congratulations. Christina Gare. <coughs> Marie Tazaravine La Tortue. Jillian Pocinius. Will the School of Education candidates for the degree Doctor of Education please stand? Mr. President, I have the honor now to present to you these candidates who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Education in the School of Education. I am pleased to join with the faculty in recommending that you confer the degree Doctor of Education upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the trustees of Hofstra University and the Regents of the State of New York and upon the recommendation of the Dean and the faculty of the School of Education, I'm delighted to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Education. Congratulations. I ask that the candidates please come forward to be introduced by Ariana Murphy, Assistant Dean of the School of Education, and the doctoral advisors please come forward to assist in the hooding. School of Education. Dr. Elaine Jackson. Dr. Yvonne Pino. Dr. Sharon Applebaum. Dr. Applebaum. Dr. Diana Potts. Dr. Megan Levin Messina. Hi, Doc. <laughs> Yana Shavrina Piljolvin. Dr. Yavana Shavrina Piljolvin. Congratulations. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology from the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences please stand? Mr. President, I now have the honor to present to you those students who have satisfied all the requirements for the degree Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. I am pleased to join with the faculty in recommending that you confer the degrees Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology as appropriate upon these candidates. By virtue of the authority vested in me, as you know, by the trustees of Hofstra University, in the regents of the state of New York, and upon the recommendation of your dean, the faculty of the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, I am delighted to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Philosophy or Doctor of Psychology as appropriate. Congratulations to you.
I ask the candidates for the degree to please come forward to be introduced by Dr. Kristen M. Weingartner, Senior Associate Dean for First Year Programs in Hofstra College. And I ask the doctoral advisors to please come forward to assist in the hooding. Hofstra College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. Jack Lee. Dr. Jack Lee. Dr. Thomas de Blasi. Dr. Vidi Patel. Dr. Chelsea Huntner. Dr. Melissa Minervini. Dr. Eileen Fusco. Dr. Samantha Bowser. Dr. Samantha Preston. Dr. Amanda Pearlberg. Dr. Zachary Rose. How about one more round of applause for every graduate? I'm pleased to now introduce Senior Vice Provost Margaret Abraham, who will present the 2019 H. Allen Robinson Outstanding Doctoral Dissertation Award. The H. Allen Robinson Outstanding Doctoral Dissertation Award was established more than 30 years ago and continues to be awarded annually to, to, due to the generosity of the late professor emeritus of reading, Dr. H. Allen Robinson. Dr. Robinson, a nationally recognized authority in reading, was the chair of the Hofstra University Department of Reading and an interim dean of the School of Education. The purpose of this award is to encourage and honor a doctoral candidate who has submitted an outstanding dissertation worthy of scholarly and professional recognition. I am pleased to announce this year's recipient Christopher P. Sclafani for his dissertation titled The Corpus Linguistics Integration Approach. This study presents an innovative methodology of teaching literacy. Congratulations to Christopher. Please come forward to be congratulated by President Rabinowitz and Provost Valuna. Okay, I'm not going to give you another speech. Um, but there is a last tradition before we close that we've had for all of these years, and it's a great one. And I would ask all of the graduates, but not the, not the parents, not the people in the audience, all of our graduates, please stand. All of the platform party, please rise. 
So we have been celebrating and clapping for you, our graduates, as we should, all night. But we all know the debt you owe to the people in the audience, your people, who got you here today. So you turn around, look at your people, and we'll join you in applauding them. Please turn to the front again. And for bachelor's degree recipients, as one more symbol of your graduation, move your tassels from right to left. Now, following the commencement, there will be a reception for graduates, guests, faculty, and members of the platform party in the David S. Mack Physical Education Center, right adjacent to the arena. We welcome everyone to attend. Will the audience remain in place until the platform party has exited? Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs>